Good Thursday morning, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with your late edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. It's going to be another hot one for today, but fortunately, we do not have too much in the way of steamy weather as what we saw over the last couple of days. So we're going to kind of turn the thermostat down a bit, but that's going to be about as good as it gets for the near future. We may see that trend continue as we head into late September, depending on what goes on with the tropics. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that as well. Drop your location and your weather reports into the comments section. Let's see who's checking in from out there. You may notice scrolling by at the bottom of your screen right here, an air quality alert has been issued for the Memphis metro area. We'll explain more about what that means coming up here in just a little bit. Very important if you are on oxygen supplies, if you have emphysema, asthma, anything like that, as ozone gas is going to be building up to some unhealthy levels in the Memphis metro area. It's kind of typical for this time of the year. What we need is something to come sweeping on through here to kind of clean the atmosphere out, and that's not really going to happen too well anytime soon. We'll talk about that coming up in just a bit. In the meantime, got any questions or anything else out there for me, drop me a line at austin.onic at wreg.com. would love to see more about what you would like to see on here, and we'll keep you updated with the weather as we go along. Trying to keep you a little cooler out there, looking at different installations around the United States for different military branches and members out there from around Thule in Greenland, 31 degrees, wind chill of about 26, weather where the troops are. We usually feature this around the holidays as a lot of people who wear the uniform for our country can't get home that soon, but looking at changing seasons and getting a little bit colder, just below freezing up in northwest Greenland. Looking back toward the Korean Peninsula, also a little cooler than what we're seeing here in the Mid-South, upper 50s around the DMZ and throughout the rest of the country, some clouds drifting on through from parts of the South China to see and just north of the Indian Ocean and temperatures not bad for right now back in the upper 50s to around the lower 60s. For those of you keeping track, three hours and or three days and change, about three, three days and 16 hours until the official start of autumn in the northern hemisphere that'll come in at 250 on Monday, September 23rd. Looking for the change in season, no guarantee we're going to be seeing any cooler weather, unfortunately, with the season anytime soon. So that's as good as it gets for the time being for right now. Patricia Harris Dobbins from Fayetteville, Arkansas, my old stomping grounds over with uh, KFSM Channel 5. Thanks a lot for joining us from over in northwest Arkansas. Hope everything's right where I left it. John Hill from West Helena. Welcome to the show. Covington, Tennessee, Rania, Rich uh, Ale, hope I'm saying that fairly close to right, and everybody else, Marlon Tucker, Mississippi, hot. Enough said. There you go. That pretty well sums it up quite nicely on that. For the rest of the day today, again, temperatures will be well above normal back into the mid-90s or so, and there could be the possibility of an isolated thunderstorm popping up, so that's going to be important for outdoor activities, especially extracurricular ones after school later on this afternoon, so please keep that in mind. Just shy of the century mark yesterday, but again, blew away record high. Record high for today is 98, set in 2010. Yesterday's record high, 90. So we did well above normal. It should be in the mid-80s at this time of the year, still in the mid to upper 90s or so, and 12 degrees above our low temperature for the day, so pretty steamy out there. No rainfall. It would be nice to get something to kind of settle the dust a little bit. We are 15 inches ahead for the entire year, so it's, again, very dry out there. It could use a little bit of rain to kind of settle the dust a little bit, but that doesn't look like it's going to be happening too quickly out there for everybody, unfortunately. Oxford, Mississippi, 84 degrees at the airport, 88 degrees for a heat index, student union on the Ole Miss campus from the Crosby Hall camera. Winds a little bit breezy, not too bad, kind of helping things out a little bit out there. Eight mile per hour winds out of the southeast. From former mayor, current meteorologist Sam Reichard in Olive Branch, weather underground network camera back to the northwest, 88 degrees with a heat index of 94 at the Olive Branch Airport. It's Collierville, again on the square, looking back to the north, not too many clouds just yet and temperatures just shy of 90 degrees at this time. Beautiful blue skies, weather underground camera from Rhodes College in Memphis, looking back to the northwest there. And traffic around rush hour, 
light and moving along pretty well at the Hilton East Memphis area for this afternoon, so not seeing a great deal of slowdowns for right now at least, so good news if you're heading out for a spot of lunch. The haze is very evident. Usually you can see downtown Memphis a lot easier here. You're not seeing that today, again, thanks to all the pollutants in the atmosphere. Traffic on I-40, I-55 in West Memphis, Arkansas moving along. Decent winds right now, 13 miles per hour out of the south. If the winds continue, we may see that code orange ozone alert lifted later on because what we need is a pretty stagnant atmosphere and if the winds are helping to stir that stuff up and out of here then we may not see that uh, anytime soon for good news on that jeffrey griffiths from walls mississippi two point typeface and bifocals are a terrible mix uh 88 and sunny thank you very much for that sardis lake kevin potts hot around that area thank you very much for that one uh, Betty Levingston from Tobytown, thanks a lot for checking on through. Uh, appreciate all that. Uh, weather reports out there, keep them coming if you've got them out there. What is left of a tropical storm over the Gulf of Mexico is barely hanging together as a tropical depression. Imelda sitting down to around the area of Houston, dumping some pretty impressive amounts of rainfall out that direction. Here in the Mid-South area, we might be affected by that rainfall coming up in the next few days as Imelda scoots off to the north, but nothing taking place in that area, at least for right now. We do, again, have that air quality alert for parts of the Mid-South area, and again, that is only for the area right around the metro, and that'll be in effect through this afternoon. So again, if you've got anything in the way of like lung ailments of emphysema, asthma, you may notice it a little bit difficult to get out and about for later on today, so indoors in a cool air conditioned filtered environment that would be best for you right there more information from shelby county health department and the national weather service available at wrhg.com slash weather if you want to check up on that there heat indexes are already close to the triple digits and numbers again back in the mid to upper 80s with a healthy amount of humidity that's what it feels like out there so we're close to 100 degrees yet again because the temperatures are not going to be quite as blazing as they were over the last about two to three days don't think we're going to be seeing a record high set for today, but it's still going to be pretty doggone hot across much of the area. There also will be, again, those possibilities of showers and thunderstorms popping up just about any point in time through the afternoon. I think the best time frame is going to be about the time you're picking up the kids from school through about drive time home and dinner time later on tonight. The computer models start popping up a couple more of these, and mostly back over toward eastern and central Arkansas will be the best possibility for that. Some of those could even linger through about midnight tonight, maybe even a couple of them sticking around through about tomorrow morning, but most of the threat should be overnight and through about daybreak tomorrow morning. Increased chance of showers and thunderstorms throughout the rest of the day. So that will also help our temperatures a bit, not by much, unfortunately, because we're going to be seeing some pretty toasty conditions out there for right now across much of the area. Catherine Grace Bland from Jackson, Tennessee, sunny and 84. Welcome to the show. 86 in Senatobia. Betty Livingston, thank you very much. And Diane Simmons-Flax from... Batesville, Mississippi. Thanks for joining us on that one. We're going to keep these showers and thunderstorms in the forecast throughout the rest of the day. Again, not great chances, about a 20% coverage chance, and that's going to be about it. Back into around the lower 90s. That's closer to normal, but not exactly where we would like to be at this time of the year in the mid-80s, and those isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms continue out there. Looks like it's just going to be partly sunny and pretty warm as we go into Saturday, and that trend will be continuing at least for a bit anyway. Going into next week, we begin autumn on Monday morning, and the first full week of autumn will have some chances of showers and thunderstorms Monday and Tuesday. Not that much expected for midweek, and then another chance by the end of the week, and unfortunately, again, remember, we should be in the mid-80s for normal temperatures at this time of the year, only going to be in the upper 80s to lower 90s. Not exactly the mid to upper 90s or century mark areas, but it is still going to be quite toasty out there throughout the next several days. So the first full week of autumn is going to be looking a lot more like summertime out there, unfortunately. So not really too much in the way of great news about that. We'll have an update on that coming up on News Channel 3 at noon. Umberto making its way out into the northern Atlantic, and as it does, it's going to be going over colder waters, which is going to sap the strength of the storm. Expected to be a tropical storm by the time we hit about early this weekend and might be a problem for Iceland or southern Greenland, but right now it looks like it's just a mid-ocean fish storm just wandering around there without too much 
much going on. Jerry, on the other hand, could be looking at more of a concern at this point in time. But for right now, the good news about Jerry is it's expected to take a right turn right past the Bahamas. Not going to be an immediate threat for the Bahamas either, so definitely some good news there. But Bermuda could be looking at a direct hit from Jerry as we go into next week, possibly as a Category 1 hurricane. Looks like there's some fluctuations here as it gets a little bit weaker out there, so we'll see how well that goes. Hurricane Hunter plane made its way inside Jerry earlier today and found out that it was going from a tropical storm to a hurricane. So it is now a Category 1 storm, and again, eventually it'll be making its way back to the northwest. And if you're going to be going anywhere to around, say, the East Coast states, or maybe a late trip to the Bahamas, around, around the area east and north of Cuba, definitely want to watch this thing as it gets a little bit closer, because again, Florida, the Keys, the East Coast, would be the primary threat if it decides to kind of go just a little bit farther to the west. So that's going to be very important to watch over the next couple of days. Of course, we'll help you do that on here, so stay tuned to News Channel 3. Next week tonight, if you live around Truman, Arkansas, or know somebody who lives around that area of Poinsett County, next week tonight, the National Weather Service will be issuing, a again, a volunteer meeting. It's totally free. You don't get paid for this. Uh, you get the opportunity to learn what to look for when it comes to severe weather, and you get an opportunity to help your community out by becoming a Skywarn storm spotter. It's The meetings last about maybe an hour, hour and a half, depending on how many questions are asked and how many the National Weather Service gets to answer. So it's a good opportunity for you as the public to ask the National Weather Service presenters and meteorologists the questions about what to do when severe weather is coming on through. Now we've been through severe season number one, that's between roughly January and about late April. Storm season number two is weeks away. It's coming up in mid-October through about early December and now is the time to get ready for those storms out there and this class with Skywarn helps you do that. So Truman Fire Department, 801 West Main Street in Truman, Arkansas. That's next week, tonight. And again, another one will be coming up just after that. A little bit outside the News Channel 3 viewing area. This one in Big Sandy, Tennessee. National Weather Service zone covers a lot bigger area than the National Weather than WREG signal does. So they're a little bit farther out of this location. But if you know anybody around Big Sandy, Tennessee, Monday, September 30th, 6.30 p.m. at the fire department in Big Sandy on Ballpark Road. There will be other meetings coming up around the Mid-South. There's about a baker's dozen of them out there slated for the next several weeks. If you want to see the whole list, all you have to do is, again, go to WREG.com slash weather or go to the National Weather Service website at weather.gov slash MEG. That's the National Weather Service three-letter identifier to keep you updated on stuff like that. So again, good news if you're going to be wanting to participate out there. Kids, I've seen them as young there as about eight or nine years old who want to know what to do. That's a good opportunity to give kids some control over what feels like a very uncontrollable situation when it comes to severe weather. Getting a handle on that, knowing what's going to happen, that's what can help you in severe weather situations. So please keep that in mind. Rest of the forecast, again, back in the mid-90s, but better chances of a few showers and thunderstorms, drive time through about dinner time tonight, and those winds hopefully enough to stir up the atmosphere to get that air quality alert out of the way, but right now, again, a little iffy on that one for the time being. Again, we're going to be looking at the possibility of a pretty warm weekend. We'll have more on that coming up a little bit later on News Channel 3 at noon or at WREG.com slash weather for the extended forecast there. Tim Simpson and Jim Jaggers have your forecast on News Channel 3 first at 4 coming up later on this afternoon. And, of course, Todd Demers will have more on your end of the weekend forecast starting bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak Friday. That starts at 4.30 a.m., so stay tuned for more there. Thanks a lot for everybody for joining us, and stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of Thursday, Friday, and into the